Hi everyone, um, it's a real pleasure to be here today and to be talking to you about special frequency domain imaging for surgical guidance in the context of this uh, symposium. Uh, so thank you again for inviting me to uh, provide this uh, presentation. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to start with some disclosure. I'm currently a full-time employee of uh, Intuitive Surgical and the content of this presentation relates to my work at the University of Strasbourg and IQ Laboratory and other academic institutions. So first on basics, uh, if you look at the evolution of technologies helping surgeons to perform their duties, um, and here's a picture on the top uh, of 1950s and 2000 operating rooms, you can see that there's been not much change in terms of helping the surgeon to perform his surgery. And this primary tool used our vision and touch which in turn leads to subjective guidance and surgeon-dependent outcome. And we think there is room for improvement in order to be able to enhance the vision in particular and to turn the subjective guidance into an objective guidance for the better healthcare outcome. So we think that optics is, of course, uh, one way to uh, provide additional information in the form of uh, enhanced vision. And for that, in terms of developing technology, there are a few parameters we'd like to satisfy. First of all, technology that's been developed needs to be real-time, so the surgeon can intervene in real-time onto his patients. It needs to be quantitative. Uh, we think that being able to be reproducible and being able to provide interpretable information is key into the decision-making for the surgery. And it needs to be wide field, simply because the surgeon is used to have a large field of view available uh, looking at anatomical structures. So we need to match the kind of natural look of the surgical field. So if we take these parameters and look at what technologies exist today, we can see, for instance, point spectroscopy, which is real-time and quantitative and not wide field, um, relates only these, these two parameters. CW fluorescence is real-time, wide field, but so far not quantitative. There's a lot of work on this. And the CFDI, Special Frequency Domain Imaging, which I will be talking about today, started to be uh, quantitative and wide field, but not real time. And I'll show you efforts on how we try to merge the real time aspect with the quantitative and wide field aspects. So uh, in a nutshell, what is Special Frequency Domain? It simply uses a projector to project uh, structures of light, patterns of light onto the surgical scene and a camera to capture this image and process the information in order to extract the interactions between the light and the tissues and the optical properties. So I'll go into more depth into this because I think it's important to understand. Um, if you take a point uh, source, a little laser pointer, for instance, and you shine it on the diffuse medium, uh, that point uh, will be observed as a blur. And this is characterized by what we call the special point spread function, which is if you want the characteristic of this blurriness as a function of the distance from the center of the illumination. Uh, it turns out that this uh, special pulse rate function is linked to the absorption and scattering properties of the tissue, which helps us to inform uh, some characteristics about the tissue. So if you do a Fourier transform of that pulse spread function, you obtain what we call the modulation transfer function. And the modulation transfer function no longer looks at the blurriness as a function of distance. But if you want the effect of this blurriness as a function of spatial frequency, it means that instead of shining a point of light, we'll be able to shine a pattern of light and look at the dampening of the amplitude modulation of the sine wave as a function of spatial frequency. Now, the power of this is that frequency methods in general allow a look at many pixels at the same time. Uh, and that's the power of SFDI. We'll be able to look at millions of pixels in a single image. So if you look at what the SFDI used to look like, uh, basic standard form, uh, you'll have six images acquired, two special frequency, three phases. You use this information to obtain the diffuse reflectance by demodulating and calibrating this data. The diffuse reflectance is the amount of light that uh, interacts effectively with the tissue. And we use that information along with models of light propagation to obtain the optical properties absorption and reduced scattering. So now we'll be looking very quickly at a few technical improvements that happened over the last 10 years. Um, this is only a few technical improvements uh, in the interest of time, and I apologize if I miss some things. Don't hesitate to comment about it after. 
Um, we talk about being real time. We talk about doing profile correction, providing high quality imaging and being multispectral imaging and possibly all together again with the interest that this is what you need in order to satisfy a good um, vision of the surgical field, uh, again, in real time, quantitatively. Uh, so special frequency domain to talk about reducing the acquisition uh, time. Uh, if you look at the standard demodulation scheme, you use special frequencies, patterns of light, and several phases. And here's a, a cross uh, plot of these images. And you look at each phase. And for each pixel, in parallel, you extract this amplitude modulation by using a very simple demodulation telecom um, equation that's written below. This is great, but it uses six images, essentially, which is an upper left here, to obtain the DC and AC information and the optical properties. Uh, we came up with uh, a method um, that's using a single image. And for this, it's a very simple idea. Um, is to do everything in the Fourier domain. So we do Fourier transform. Here it's shown on a line-by-line -line basis, but we do a full 2D Fourier transform, of course. And we filter directly the DC component to obtain the amplitude modulation of the lower frequency. And uh, the higher spatial component, the carrier, if you want frequency, um, to obtain the high spatial frequency component. That allows you effectively to obtain the same information as before, but from a single image. So we speed up the acquisition drastically here. Another issue, as illustrated also um, on the video that's down there, is that the profile that we have uh, in general uh, in um, surgery are not flat. And we use a calibration that is flat. So the discrepancy between this flatness, uh, the distance between the light source of the imaging system and the sample creates a lot of artifacts. As you can tell, if the hand is moving up, up and down, you see its absorption properly varying. Um, this is, of course, wrong. So for this, us and others have been proposing methods um, that relies on uh, using uh, a measurement of the 3D profile, which is called structural light profilometry, uh, to uh, uh, correct for um, the effect of distance and angle. As you can tell here, once it's uncorrected, you have all these variation of optical properties. This is an homogeneous phantom, so it should be the same everywhere. And once you correct, you get much better results. Uh, uh, other work uh, relates to have a high quality image. When you try to image with a single image, um, like we do in SSOP, uh, you tend to have a lot of artifacts due to the fact you use a single image. Um, artificial intelligence has been a, a very active field uh, for SFDI, as shown by the publications from Darren O'Brien's group at BU or Nick Beer uh, group at Johns Hopkins. And the idea here is to use artificial intelligence to basically simplify the processing uh, of uh, SFDI. And here we developed for SSOP uh, a small GAN network to do only the demodulation step, the rest being pretty fast. The idea is to be fast, of course, to be real time. And uh, this improved a lot the images. Uh, as you can tell here, this is images of the intestine and the colon. Uh, you can see SFDI images that are 3D profile corrected. Uh, just about nine image acquisition necessary for this minimum. And the SSOP is using a single image and does the same thing, which is 3D profile corrected absorption and scattering maps. And you can tell they, they're pretty close to each other and we really improve the quality. I want to show you an overview of the quality improvement. This is 3D corrected SFDI image of a hand. This is the first SSOP uh, basic filtering in 2013. You can see a lot of artifacts improved filtering in 2018, and finally, uh, um, artificial intelligence that, that really improved quite a bit, uh, you can tell here. And this is a movie showing you a hand moving uh, using the latest um, artificial intelligence uh, code. And you can tell it's pretty smooth. Um, special temporal, the idea is to modulate light sources at the same time, uh, uh, the spectrum in time, sorry, at the same time as we're modulating in space to obtain to encode the wavelength, if you want, in time while we're doing the optical property processing. This has been also developed by Darren Roblier at BU, but by us as well. Uh, I will skip that in terms of time. Specular SFDI, I showed that to you because I think it's uh, really uh, maybe one of the future techniques that will be very interesting, developed initially by Jane uh, et al. at MIT and by Nick Der Group at Johns Hopkins. The idea is instead of using projectors, you use simply the speckle patterns to get the structured illumination. Very interesting work. 
challenges ahead very quickly. I'm running out of time. Uh, high quality, real time, freely corrected, and multi spectral SMDI. Altogether, this is still quite a challenge. Doing sub diffuse images has very large value into doing sub diffuse images, as found by uh, Brian's Park group, and also doing multi frequency imaging, like uh, Bruce Trumper's group or Darren's group, also at BU. Um, clinical translation, very little work on this end uh, for surgery. This is an ongoing work, as you can guess. And the most important question in my mind is what, what value can we provide for surgery? Um, we have very promising preclinical results, several first in human, uh, but we have to keep in mind that simpler is better. And that's why the speckle is interesting in particular, and see how we can actually impact uh, certain decision making in the end. And that, that's the key question. Uh, the, the biggest challenge for, I guess, most of the methods that will be presented today, how can we impact healthcare? Finally, I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators and the people that do the work, the funding, and refer you to our website here where you'll find a lot of information on SFDI, code in MATLAB, and executable and data you can use. So please go ahead and, and uh, look at it. Um, with this, thank you very much for your attention and um, uh, best of luck for the rest of the symposium. Thank you.